I don't ever saw anything like it. It's a cocoon bay. Dreams of them. Oh, yeah. The whole tree is covered in a, no, it's a leaf. But it's strings and strings of them. Look where you look. But the whole thing is like a bumpy. Oh, can you see it? I've never seen anything like it. The whole tree is covered in them. It's a horror thing. Morning everybody, it's just gone 5am. So uh, it's just me and the birds and the canal and hopefully some chub. We'll see if we can catch them. I've never come down at this time of year to try and catch these chub. I only come and caught them in the winter when it's been tap water clear, you can see them. Um, I walked down here yesterday with my wife. Um, <laughs> I avoided all the moths. There's a million of these uh, moth caterpillars. Um, the trees are all covered in cobwebs, it's pretty horrific, so it's something out of a horror movie. So um, anyway, I'm coming a different way today, um, and um, because I've got my camera equipment, I'm going to push it all on my barra, and the tow path is horrific. So um, we'll see how we get on with that. But anyway, yeah, it's just gone 5am, and I'm going to try and catch some chub before the boats. heard the church bells it's chimed six o'clock um, yeah it looks chubby I've definitely seen activity of chub <laughs> uh, some at big rolled about 500 meters down there something big has rolled 500 meters up there but 10 15 minutes ago maybe three great big disturbances just about I don't know eight meters to my right they were definitely chub on the surface. Three big boils. And um, there would have been more than three there. So I've scared them. They know I'm here. Um, but I've seen smaller fish topping. So we'll see. We'll see if we can't catch any. Um, I'm just hoping they're going to come to me. I'm going to fish down the middle. And maybe if the boats start coming, I'll go further across. But it just goes up to nothing. And I know these chub go up and down the middle in the deeper water. And at least if I hook them there, I've got a chance of getting them out because there's reeds and brambles and everything. So um, that's the plan. Chopworm and caster, big meaty heavy rig. And uh, let's see if we can catch a chub or two. So here's my peg. You see me set up? They've got reeds all the way over there. And, uh, yeah, it's a little bit narrow. I've optimistically put my keep net in. And um, I'll show you the rig now. I've just got a 0.3 matrix mud line. It's only four and a half foot. Oh, caught my feet. And uh, this is on strong gear. I've got an 018 hook length. A sort of medium sort of um, size 16 hook but it's strong, barbed, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, number 10's down the line. I think that's about right. Yeah, it's just over four and a half foot. And I've got a short kit with 14 to 16 slicking, because um, I don't want them to go very far, these fish. Yeah, so it's actually a, a short kit. Um, so it's just the right amount of elastic. And I'm fishing a top kit and is it four or five sections? I can't remember. The only problem is it's a really tight bush behind me. So I can't, um, I haven't got a lot of room to manoeuvre. I'll pop a bit of worm and cast. I'm just going to feed one line to begin with. I could go up, long up that way. I could go long up that way. I could go to the bush. But I'm just going to go slightly to my right there to begin with. Bait-wise, some lovely, lovely casters. 
the lanes. And then I've um, got some dendrobinas. Chop off. I'm definitely going to chop some off at the start because a crude rig, the best thing to put on the hook on a crude rig is a worm. But I will try dual caster as well. And I'm, hopefully, I can catch them on worms. So we we'll just I don't mind the mud. Don't mind some quite big bits in there as well. Not going too fine. I assume we'll catch quite a few perch and things. You wouldn't think there was a perch in this canal in the winter. And it, well, where I am today, but uh, there we are. That's all we want. And, uh, I've got a little whole mounted pot if I need it as well to drip in a little bit of bait. That's it, I'm trying to be quiet because we're right out in the middle of the sticks and um, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit jumpy, there's caterpillars everywhere. <laughs> I'll show you some footage in a bit. Um, but yeah, let's just get on with the fishing part and feeding. So, a reasonable dollar per worm. Decent dollar per worm. And um, uh, 40, 40, 50 casters. And then we'll keep dolloping some in. Right, and let's get started. So it might take a little while to get one. But we'll see. Won't know until we try. But I think we're going to catch one. <laughs> I don't know how many more after that because they're so spooky, these fish. So I'm going to pop a worm on. I'm just going to break it off. So I've got two thirds of a worm on to start with. There's plenty of hooks showing. I tend to find with chub, you need a smaller hook than you'd like to use, but we'll see. We'll see how quickly we can get a fish. <laughs> I've deliberately gone for a light rig. There's no tow, there's no boats. It'd be nice if it's just buried straight away. I've not checked the shotting on this float yet. It might be a touch, a touch too shotted, but we'll see. I'll show you, might have a shot on it, not off. But actually, I'm quite bleary-eyed this morning, not getting a lot of sleep at the moment, and uh, it's very early anyway. I say, it's just chimed six o'clock, just before I turn the cameras on. So uh, we've probably got a couple of hours before a boat comes. But yeah, we might just pop another little shot on that. Let's keep flicking it in anyway, they'll, they'll follow it down. And I'm going to... Get me on and just rattle five or six casters as well. And if we're lucky, we'll get one or two immediately. Be too far. But I, don't, I don't mind creating a little bit of an area. And that's it, that's just soft shotted right now. That's better. Because obviously, we want to draw them in. But um, yeah, when I come here in the winter, it's um, it goes tap water clear. And there's at least 40, 50 chub um, in a big old shoal. But they're so spooky. And I've definitely scared three that were down there. Mm. My thinking is the chub are to my right, based on what happened. But they might have bolted up to the left. But they go up and down this canal a lot. And I think you'll get a little window where there'll be two or three that might stop and have a feed and then they're gone again. I, I don't think we're going to hold these chub. I think they're too wild and they're way too spooky. That's why they're out here in the middle of the countryside. So it could be a bit of a waiting. 
awaiting game. I'm sure I'll be able to catch them, you know, just three or four metres out, but I've tried to put a bit of distance between me and the fish because I've got cameras <laughs> as well. It's an extra layer of disturbance. Certainly an extra layer of uh, gear to carry, <laughs> which I could have done without. I could have carried all this gear, but not with uh, all my cameras. Oh, crikey, my catapulting is awful. So we will see. Oh. There's a real red kite. Just saw the shadow, the, uh, it's a reflection down here. But again, if we don't get a bite here, I'm gonna plumb up a rig towards the brambles, but I know it's very, very shallow over there. I came down here yesterday with my wife for a long walk. And um, I brought my shears and I cleared this bit out. And, um, but we came from that direction. Oh my God, it was like a horror film. Uh, the, uh, I saw some line and some shot hanging from the tree. Then I saw some more line and a shot hanging from the tree. And I looked closer and the shot was wriggling. And then I realized it wasn't shot, it was a, a caterpillar. And then I looked closer and there was more and more caterpillars. And then I looked and they were, it was trailing everywhere you saw and caterpillars, but it looked like a bulk of shot, number eight shot on a bit of line. And then we looked and looked and looked and then realized behind it, there was a tree covered in cobwebs. And then we realized there were thousands and thousands of these caterpillars. It was horrific. And then we carried on walking. We kept seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. And my wife was uh, not particularly happy having to avoid all these, all these caterpillars. And then we had to go back through them again as well. And they were on us. But, oh, it was horrific. Yeah, <laughs> I quite agreed. But just to my left, there's some more. If it's windy, they're going to blow on to me. But I can see some more, but thankfully there was hardly anything that way. Because <laughs> I've come from that direction this morning. There's a kite again. So yeah. I could collect some of those and pull them on the hook, I suppose. Yeah, well this is my peg, and just a few metres away, look, these weren't here the day before, or I didn't notice them the day before. Just hope it's not windy, but look, there's thousands of the things. Really, really freaky sight. Yeah. But based on everything I've seen, there's, there's obviously loads of natural food everywhere at the moment. We'll see if they want to have my worms and casters. Because I haven't got anything else. Yeah, and obviously I'll, I'll pull a lighter rig up with, um, with caster potentially as well. But I'll try double caster on this first. I thought we might have had an early perch, if nothing else. Which will give me a bit of confidence to keep pulling a little bit of bait in. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll turn my camera off instead of on. <laughs> we'll catch another one. Got to be more than one little perch there, isn't there? <laughs> yep. Be another little perch, isn't it? Or a daddy rough. But I've definitely seen some roach or something topping, so. Um, a little bit of worm, we might we might be surprised what we catch today. 
It's going to be really sunny today. It's going to be 20, 21 degrees by about 11, 12 o'clock. I'll be long gone by then. Inch of, inch of worm on now. There's definitely some in there. Go on. Like I say, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> Two perch. See, I'm already bottling it and wishing I'd put a much lighter rig on. But this is my crude animal rig. I'm going to have another five minutes here now. I'm going to plumb up in front of that little patch of reeds there. And I can back between the two then. Yeah. Right. Let's put a bit more in. Make a note of that depth and um, find another swim towards those reeds. Just means I'm gonna have to, it's a nightmare trying to focus with that, with float cam. So I was a bit reluctant to, uh, to move it. Three foot's a nice depth, isn't it? Like I say, it goes in up to nothing. If, it, if the boats were coming thick and fast, you'd catch in a foot of water. But I'm not convinced uh, it's right today. Right, let's pop a tail of the worm on then. A bit, a bit more perchy, a bit more wriggly. Surely that's not an hour. It is. It'll be near an hour. <laughs> you just about hear the church bells in the background. Just in another big fish roll right up there. I say I'm sure it's the chub. Hopefully they'll be thinking about coming back down to see me. I think they live down here more than up there, but Obviously, with me about, they've backed off, perhaps. So we'll, uh, we'll keep having five minutes on each swim, I suppose. I still think that's going to be where I'm going to catch them, but but three foot against these reeds, nice depth. I suppose I could have come with maggots. These fish have never seen a caster, that's for sure. <laughs> no way. But. Uh, I just think worm and caster is, is like strawberries and cream. They go together beautifully and they let your fish, you know, crude tackle or your sturdier tackle. But I'm going to give it till nine o'clock. If I haven't had one by nine, then I've blown it, I think. It drives me mad, this canal. It should be so much better than what it is. This is on the Grand Union now and I've had five or six pounds. Everything's telling me to put a, a lighter rig on. Maybe an O12 bottom. Whoa. There you go. You might have a chill. I think that's a little chub. I know it's a it's a high bit. Wow. Look out for a big hybrid. <laughs> Beautiful. It's gotta be a fourteen ounce. <laughs> wow. 
I have had some stunning bags of hybrids from this canal, not from this peg, but uh, good. And it pulled out a bit of elastic considering I've got strong old gear on. Well that hybrid didn't mind the crew tackle did it? So uh, I'm more inclined to stay with it now. So you come here in winter, you wouldn't think there's a fish in this bit of lunch up. So it's nice to see a high of it. Or not, I just seem to sink a bit lower. Grabbed it. I'm sure that grabbed it as I lifted it, and it's another hybrid. Not the intended species, but look at these. Aren't they hybrid? Very soft. Uh, slimy. Oh, it's very slimy. Oh. Extremely slimy. Yeah, no bite. I lifted it. I'm sure it's grabbed it as I've lifted it. Again, that came straight to that worm, didn't it? If they're about, we might just catch those. Not the chub I was after. So there was no bite. I reckon it's just gone whoop as I've lifted it up. I'm cold, I'm getting chew drops on the end of my nose. Oh. I haven't had any breakfast. I'm gonna give this a minute or two. If it doesn't go under, I'm gonna set up a lighter rig. Still strong enough for a chub. I'm gonna put an O12 up length to a slightly uh, finer, a 16 MXB2. And then we can fish a caster and little bits of worm and maybe catch a few more hybrids if they're about. Here comes the first boat. I was going to uh he's not looking like he's slowing down. But we'll have a quick go before the boat. I was just about to set another rig up but I could hear him charging around the corner. He's definitely not slowing down. That, that's, that's going to really churn up now. We'll let it settle a little bit. Look, see how shallow it is. But that's, this might help. This might be the, the thing we needed to spark these fish. Might as well chop a few casters up with them as well. Chop worm. <laughs> First boat of the day. What time's he? Yeah, five to eight. 
two hours, two hybrids, two little perch. <laughs> I only wanted to give it till nine o'clock. You haven't caught one by then, you're not gonna wait for this lady to come by and then we'll swap to the other rig. Morning. Tiny bit of worm on first. A little sliver. And then we'll pop a single caster on. Quite a long length of line above. I think it might not make a difference this rig, but unless you try it, you don't you don't know, do you? Yeah, this is a much more sensitive rig. I've got a 0.2 gram stubby slim, it just takes I think six number eleven. 012 hook length to a 16. So it's still strong enough to get a chub in. I really don't want to go down to 010. So I'm fishing three or four inches over that for a single caster. I've buried a size 16 inside. And then another sniff. It does cross my mind that maggots might have been a better option. <laughs> well, that's made me confident that it's not my rig that's at fault. It's definitely not my rig. That's the problem. <laughs> Kite's waiting for some food as well. In behind the trees. There he is. There he is. Yeah, gotcha. Another half an hour. I'll have to admit defeat. He should have gone breathing. Fed my very last dollop. Big bit of worm on. All right. Morning. There's been an old small fish pimpling. I, I bet if we'd have had some pinkies somewhere, we'd have caught a few. I'm not come for that. I've come to fish chop worm and caster for, for quality fish. Have you not seen them as you've gone through? Oh, I saw some hanging down. They're on you, that's why you haven't seen them. They're all over you. Oh. There's thousands of them. What, sit where she is right there, to the right, there's, you look there. There's, there's, when you go up, there's, there's loads. Oh, I, I mean, I mean literally thousands. But you, right. you'll see the cobwebs in the trees, yeah. and then you'll see them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's worse up there. Don't stick your nose in there. <laughs> Did you see them? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's horrific. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got three. Three like that, yeah. And yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. It's a hybrid. <laughs> yes, have you seen them up there? There's thousands of them. Yeah, there's don't that's the only last one, yeah. The, that's horrific up there, yeah. <laughs> oh no, yeah, yeah. 
That, I think that's the very last lot. <laughs> Thank you, you too. I assume that's it. Morning. But this is where they start, but the, when you get a bit further, there's, there's thousands of them. But you'll, 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 see the, you'll see the cobwebs in the trees and you'll know, but the bits that overhang, just be mindful. All right. <laughs> Once you're through the big tunnel bit, that, there, there, there's no more after that. You can tell by the way they're jogging now that they're not very keen on going much further. I don't blame you. We just thought we'll go the other it's way. It's like some out of a horror film. No, it's horrible. <laughs> right, the There's just that little bit there, that's it. <sighs> I think we'll call that a day. There we are. Three nice hybrids. That's the biggest one. And a couple of little perch. <laughs> Not really what we expected or came for, but uh, saved us a blank, didn't it? Let's pop them back. <laughs>